fear, fear, fear. I'm talking about the fear that keeps you from trying. I'm talking about the fear that keeps you from going. I'm talking about the fear that's keeping you from your purpose. I'm talking about the fear that has you looking back and looking and, and realizing and recognizing the time that you've wasted being fearful. I'm talking about the fear that has you paralyzed. Let's address that fear. Trust me, growing up, I had plenty of fears and I think most people have fear of something. Growing up, I was afraid of dogs. I was afraid of stepping out of line. I was afraid of not being the good girl. I was afraid of not being appropriate. That's why I wore this lipstick today. Not that it's inappropriate because it's my vlog, but in general, people wouldn't expect me to wear this color lipstick, but I used to be fearful of what if I do it, what will they say? What will they think? Well, what I learned is they will think something no matter what, whether the lipstick is red or blue or purple or no lipstick, whether you take a risk or you don't take a risk, whether you become CEO or you stay in the current job that you have, whether you ever travel outside the country or you prefer not to travel abroad, no matter what your choices are, they will be there to judge them. Don't you worry. They will be in every area that you jump to. However, they will not be with you when you look back in the rearview mirror and have regret about the things that you didn't do because you were fearful of doing them. They will not be there when you realize that you wasted so much time. They won't be there. You will. You will be there with you and the regret. Now, I get it. There are consequences. Sometimes we take a risk. We, we do the thing that we're fearful of. We fail. And potentially, there are some balls that fall to the ground. But guess what? In all of the history of human uh, kind thus far, people have failed and balls have come crashing to the floor. And as far as I know, the sun is still coming up, as is the moon. The leaves are still changing. And life is going on, as far as I know. What I'm saying is that fear is keeping the gifts that so many of us have from getting to the rest of the world. And we need them. We need you in your full capacity without the fear of failing, without the fear of rejection, without the fear of getting hurt. To me, what's worse than the feeling of fearing something is the feeling of regretting it. And I'm talking about something that I really want. There are things that I'm afraid of, like spiders, but I have no desire to love spiders. So it's not a fear that I'm really concerned about. I'm not looking, f you know, I'm not going to go to a spider farm, if that exists, and jump in a pile of spiders. But I did have a fear of creating workshops for organizations and, and thinking about how they would receive them. But I couldn't let it stop me. And trust me, there are workshops and keynotes and things that I've done where I have bombed, I have failed. But what I know about failure, it is not an indication of my ability to complete, to accomplish, to finish, to do, to succeed. Failure just tells me that my strategy was off. When I was thinking about this post, I thought about a few people came to mind who, in my mind, are the opposite of fear. And one of them is my friend Dee Marshall, who is the CEO of Diverse Engaged. And before Dee became this world-renowned speaker, she was on Wall Street. And Dee actually had a fear of being inadequate at the time because there were a lot of people there who came from different backgrounds, had gone to Ivy League schools, you know, had a, a different characteristics about their lives than she had in her life and she thought that she wouldn't be enough. What helped Dee to get over her fear was that someone told her about the quote 
that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And so Dee had a, had a light bulb moment like, oh, wait, I'm sorry, powerful beyond measure. Oh, I don't fear that. I actually want that. Another person that I spoke to is my friend, Sonia Jackson Miles. She is the CEO of the Sister Accord. And Sonia had a uh, successful corporate career and she stepped out and created the Sister Accord, which is based on building love and community and togetherness and connectedness amongst women. And she thought to herself, now, how is that a business? How is that a business that corporations would pay for? And she had a fear that they wouldn't. Well, she stepped out and guess what? They did. Now, I'm sure she had to retool and rethink and adjust, but ultimately she put her fears to bed. Nicole Roberts Jones, CEO of Fierce Factor Labs, another dear friend of mine. Nicole had a, a career in entertainment and then she was on the speaking circuit all around the globe, worked with uh, many well-known speakers. But Nicole, something was calling for her to start her own. But she was thinking, I don't know if I can do that. But she knew that the only way for her to find out was to do it. She did it and she is now also experiencing success, not without any failures. Janae J. Smile Smith, one of my best friends in the entire world, recently had a, a meltdown right before her five uh, city one woman comedy show tour started. She was asking herself, who am I? Who am I to put on this one woman show? And how dare I? But she was afraid of disappointing people. So her fear of disappointing people was actually what moved her to go ahead and do the tour. And she is coming up on her fourth sold out show in New York City. My friend, Tony Waller, who is the senior director of constituent relations for Walmart. I asked Tony what was something that he feared and he talked about being vulnerable because we're taught to, to be strong and to, and to withhold information or part of ourselves is what makes us powerful. But what Tony learned was that actually it was the not withholding information that made him feel powerful. It was actually releasing it and not being bound by the fear because he knows or believes that the power, the true power is in the ability to be vulnerable. So all the stories that I just talked about are of people who stepped out and who experienced success. Those same individuals also experience failure. Over time, fear in the thing that you faced starts to dissipate the more you participate in it. What happens is you start along the way and maybe you're you know, a little shaky, you're not sure how it's gonna work out, maybe you stumble, maybe you fall. Hopefully you get back up. And you look and you say, where did, I, where did I miss that step, right? So you start to adjust your strategy. Where did I miss that step? How can I do this differently so that my step is a little more sure the next time I take it? And then you take that step and maybe that step is shored up and you take another step and another step and another step and you experience success. But then let's say you fall 10 steps in, but you already remember falling 10 steps ago and you remember that you got up. You remember that you adjusted your strategy and put effort into it. And so that the next step you took was a little bit surer than the step you took before. And that becomes your process. So it's not that you don't ever think that you're going to fail or get rejected or not have the outcomes that you want. It's that you realize that that has nothing to do with your ability to do the thing that you're seeking to do. So face the fear, forget the outcomes, shore up your process, 
When you fall down, get back up. They will be there, yes, potentially talking, assessing, monitoring, judging, but it doesn't matter because they don't go away whether you succeed or you fail. Face your fear.